All right, next question is from Captain Tanya BC. What are your suggestions for building bone health and strength? What do you suggest for people with osteopenia who are progressing towards osteoporosis? I know resistance training is great for this, but is there a certain way to approach it when you've got one or both of these? You probably dealt with this a lot, Sal. I did. Mm -hmm. I actually, one client in particular, I, I, I trained quite a few clients uh, in osteopenia and osteoporosis towards the end of my career. Um, I had some uh, a lot of doctor clients, and then they would refer, refer patients to me. One lady that I trained, um, she had osteopenia, and she was on treatments for it. They would give her, um, you know, very very harsh medication to try and reverse this because her bone loss was happening pretty quickly. Now the thing was, she was already active. She did lots of walking, and she ate a pretty healthy diet. She did not lift weights though, so she hires me because someone tells her that lifting weights uh, will help uh, build bone. And we did. We started lifting weights, and her doctor would annually, you know, or, or biannually measure her bone density. They were so blown away by the, 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 not only just stopping the bone loss, but actually the reversal of it. They were so blown away by it that the doctor actually uh, did a case study on her and had me write some stuff that he could, you know, present. I don't remember where he was presenting it, but as, uh, you know, basically to say that resistance training was. Uh, just remarkably effective. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing about lifting weights uh, or just resistance training in particular. You know, we think of it as building muscle. It's a bone builder, mm -hmm. just as much as it's a muscle builder. Yeah, just as much. I remember this with Dr. Spina. Kind of has this whole like presentation about how each one of these tissues, whether it's ligaments, whether it's uh, you know muscle tissue, whether it's bone, they they all interact with each other, and and force is is the communication between it all. So it's really applying the right amount uh, that affects the you know all these tissues uh, together. Yes. So um, because muscle anchors on bone, as muscle strengthens and pulls harder, bone just strengthens. Nothing, nothing is more effective than resistance training for strengthening bone. If you have osteopenia, osteoporosis, there isn't a single thing you can do uh, that will that will help you more effectively, that's natural, uh, than resistance training. In fact, I don't think there's any medication that will even come close um, as well. Now, the question is, how do I do this? Uh, heavy. Heavy weight, heavy weight training is the best way. Now, it has to be appropriate Right. So good form. Right. Heavy for a 70-year-old. You got to keep that in mind. Like people hear heavy and they think, oh, okay. No, it's all relative. Right. Yeah. It's all relative. So, but, but the, in other words, you need to do traditional strength training, not circuits, not hit training, not anything like that, but like yeah. seven, eight reps of a squat or a With deadlift. Proper or rest up. periods, yeah, for recovery. Yes. Now, the best exercises for this, all resistance training exercises are good. But the best ones are the ones that load the entire body and the spine. Barbell squat, barbell deadlift, overhead press. I, you know what I think of? Carries. Carries are really mm -hmm. good, Carries too. for someone like this, I think, is just tremendous. Mm -hmm. I mean, walking is such a fundamental thing we should be doing anyways. It's an easy thing to progressively overload with a, with a client that's advanced age. It's like, I could start her off with just carrying 20-pound dumbbells in her hand, and that could be a load for her that she's not used to, and then slowly work up to a trap bar and adding weight to it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I've always loved about the, the carries when we got into them was that... You just feel that from the neck down, and that what that is the reason why the the, the bones are growing. That's an it's an adaptation response to the stress. You're getting yeah. the bones are being stressed that the, you're carrying a heavy load, so they're going to get thicker and more dense to support that. And so doing exercises that are loading the body and like to your point, mm -hmm. yeah, that are from head to toe. And I I think farmer carries is a, is a, a must in, inside there, and it's teaching a, a seventy year old. How to perform a squat if they've never learned how to do it is could be really difficult. Well, right? I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you about this lady, right? So she was in her late sixties, never had resistance trained before, and it, you know, you, you always want to train appropriate. Okay, so again, it's all relative. But w when we started, literally the lower body exercise we started with, uh, I would have her hold on to the squat rack with one hand, get into a split stance like she's doing a lunge. I put a pad underneath her. She would kneel down on the pad and then stand back up. So it's like a modified lunge. And we, I wouldn't have her do very many. She wasn't very strong when we started. By the end of, I want to say, a year and a half of training, she was doing 
barbell squats with a 30 pound barbell on her back. So not a lot, but way better. I mean, way stronger than she was before. She was deadlifting 90 pounds, That's which really is good. significant, right? Off the ground. She was a, a, a small petite lady too. Overhead pressing the 12 pound dumbbells. We were bench pressing with a 30 pound barbell. We were barbell rowing with, I think, 30 pounds, something like that. So we were we had progressed to all these movements. She had gotten strong with them. And again, it, it, the doctor was so shocked because there's a point when you get into when from when osteopenia becomes osteoporosis, and the best that they can hope for is like stopping it. Yeah. This is what they kind of like You're slowing oh, it down. Slowing it down. She not only did she stop it, she started she, she started reversing to the point where we were getting to the point where the doctor was almost going to take her off that classification mm. and say you no longer have. Uh, and that's a. That's a, apparently that's a tough thing or rare thing for them to see. Now, what uh, it, what medication would they prescribe? Say you're in that situation. I think she was on Fosamax. I want to say. I uh-huh. think that's the name. God, how do you remember that? Yeah, I don't know. God, you're such no a That's why I asked because I, I know, figured you know that. It's like, <laughs> and I train those clients too. Maybe not as many as you do, but gee, the fact that you would remember the medication that they take. Yeah, right? that, that that is what it was. It was Fosamax. It's a I, stupid gift. Yeah, and the side effects are. I mean. They get a lot of side effects from it and stuff, which Superpower. is power. Yeah, it which is, is stop. It is. Which is super. Here's the other thing with the fucking medication. Stop. Remember, I, can, I can I can't even remember the medication I had to take. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that you take every day. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I always take less than I should. You know what I mean? But you know, here's the other thing with let's talk about diet for a second. Um, so long as you don't have any nutrient deficiencies, because um, I guarantee if you have osteopenia, I'm sure they're checking your vitamin D levels. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they're checking your calcium levels. If all of your nutrients, your micronutrients are okay then what you want to do is you want to eat a diet that's best for building muscle, okay? So I know a high-protein diet, for example, has not been shown in literature to build bone or strengthen bone. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. What we want to do is we want to feed the body that gets in a way that builds the most strength in the muscle because it's the pulling of the muscle that anchors on the bone that causes the bone to get. So I put – I had her eat – uh, she was eating, and this she was a uh, uh, she did not like meat when we first started training, but over mm-hmm. time she started to to appreciate it. We I had her eating about 0. 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Um, she was eating a traditional muscle building diet. I feel like that was a big part That's of it. Such as well. a good point. Yeah. This is another example of like when science misses the mark, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're studying when we we tend to isolate things like bone, right? right? Be like, oh, if you increase your protein one to one gram, it doesn't do anything for the bones. No, but you can't. You can't factor in that, or you're not factoring in that person also ended up building five or ten more pounds of muscle, which building ten more pounds of muscle did actually respond. Yes, because because muscles are the ones that are lifting the weights, and the more weight you can lift, the more the bone needs to adapt to support that. So you want to eat a diet that makes your muscles as strong as possible if you want to strengthen your bone, and and that's just like the diet we always talk about, which is a high-protein diet balanced with carbs and with fats.